everybody, I'm Mel. And I'm Matt. And welcome to Stranger Things. So today we're going to be talking about 32 short films about Glenn Gould, which is directed and co-written by, I can't say his name, and this is why I'm laughing because we've just spent about 10 minutes trying to get me to say his name, Francois Girard? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so this film came out in 1993. Um, what we're kind of talking about with this is kind of the relationship between film and music. And I think probably a lot of the times when we talk about films, we're going to end up exploring that because um, the reason we're actually doing this one is because Matt and I attend university together. As this goes up, we're just starting our final semester, um, which is pretty freaky. But uh, yeah, last semester we did a music and film class and we touched on this film and actually we got to experience it a pretty cool way because we got to see it in the theatre with the music properly done the way it should but yeah so it's obviously about Glenn Gould um it uses like a com complex sort of form a narrative I guess to explore Glenn Gould's relationship with music so yeah what we're gonna do obviously there's a lot to explore within this so what we did is take two scenes each and we're just going to explore those because otherwise I think this video is going to be long enough as it is. If we did them all, we would just be here forever. But it's something that we can maybe come back to in the future if you find it interesting. So, yeah, do you, uh, do you want to start? Yeah, so um, I guess the, the first thing I would like to say is that the actor who plays Gould in the film, I don't know what you thought about him, but I thought he, he was really good. He got... He, he got, sounded just like him. Yeah, he got all the mannerisms down and the, you know, the... um the way he spoke and everything. So it's nice to compare if you were to watch an interview with Glenn Gould and then watch the film, you would see how much effort the uh, the actor put in to the kind of mimicking Gould's little oh, yeah. uh, idiosyncrasies. Um, so the, the first uh, episode that I chose to write about was episode five called Gould Meets Gould. And it's basically, um, they took the text of an interview that Gould wrote of himself interviewing himself about himself <laughs> um, and they turned it into one of the episodes in this film so they have one Gould character sitting in the middle while the second Gould is kind of pacing around the vicinity of the um the, the kind of the hall that they're in and they're doing this interview you know and the music that accompanies this scene is uh a Bach fugue. The thing that I sort of thought was interesting about this scene was the fact that um, basically the interview kind of turns into an argument, a bit of an argument mm. between himself and the music that accompanies the scene is obviously a fugue, it's like a, a musical argument so it's kind of has a nice parallel running throughout the scene and even the kind of the, um, the delivery from the actor and the, uh, the kind of the rhythm of the speech sort of locks in really nicely with the rhythm of the um, the fugue played on the keyboard by Glenn Gould, the original recording. So yeah, um, that's that's a good one. Is that Number your first five. your yeah. first scene? Yeah. Well, mine is about to blow your mind. Okay, I'm ready. I'm bringing it back to philosophy, wouldn't you know? Have you heard of the philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer? I have heard of Schopenhauer. Yeah. yeah um. Well, basically, he's like a 19th century German philosopher. And in 1818, this comes to a point, this is a little bit long-winded, but I promise this will be related to Glenn Gould. So bear with me. So in 1818, he wrote The World as Will and Representation. And sort of he had the theory called The Will to Life, which I have a direct quote here from it. So basically, he believed that our inner nature was not consciousness, but some like innate drive to exist independent of consciousness. So he kind of questioned what makes us, us. And one of the quotes that I picked from him is, a drive that is entirely without awareness, such as creates us in the womb. Okay, there's a reason I picked this, and there's a reason this comes back to the film. Right, so in the film, all the pieces of music we hear, pretty much, except for one, are piano pieces played by Glenn Gould, with the notice notable exception of Tristan and Isolde, which is Wagner's piece, so it's very much st stood out for me. So, what a lot of people think is that Wagner's Tristan and Isolde was based on Arthur Schopenhauer's theories, 
Okay. Okay. So you see where I'm coming from here. Mm -hmm. Now the interesting thing is in this scene, this is whenever we're very introduced to Little Gould. This is the, the second scene. It's called Lake Simcoe. Um, and this is where we see him at his youngest and sort of it goes through various stages of his youth. He maybe ends up what age is he? Maybe just coming into being a teenager. Yeah. Or the very last part of it. So what I find interesting about this is, right, we have that quote, a driver that is entirely without awareness, such as Grace's in the room. So this kind of fits in well, because... In the womb? In the womb. While the overture is playing, which is the beginning or the birth mm -hmm. of the opera, from Wagner's Tristel and Isolde, we're introduced to Glenn Gould and like Simcoe. And as he, we kind of hear the older Gould reflecting on what life was like growing up, and he said, the story goes that while I was in the womb, she played a piano continuously to give me a head start. And do you think that was a conscious decision? I don't by the know. Director? I couldn't find anything about that out, but I just thought that that was all very nicely packaged together and related. I think a lot of the times in this film is what the director's trying to do is kind of establish, like we never see him actually playing the piano yeah. in the whole film. You never actually get to see him playing any music. So I think what he's trying to establish is that his connection with music was even just everywhere. It was yeah. outside of actually his act of playing it. So yeah, Schopenhauer once said, yeah, some of the theories of art applies that from the moment we hear a melody, it arouses a desire within the listener. We have a powerful need for music to find resolution and a melody creates a sense of longing within us. That final resolution, at which point it ceases to exist and becomes silence. That makes it, says Schopenhauer, an analogue of our innermost states, our life and life ending in death. It's quite, uh, pretty deep. Isn't it? Yeah. But it fits with, like, the whole, I think, the whole structure in the film. I went all Schopenhauer all over that. Very good, yeah. So shall I talk about the next one now? Yeah, let's go for the next okay, one. Okay, so, interestingly enough, the next episode that I picked, episode 18, called Questions with No Answers, also features a back fugue running alongside. Okay. That's why I picked them so that I could kind of compare the, fugues. compare the, the the two different ones and how they're used differently. So in this episode, um, the uh, it's basically um, Gould being interviewed, but you don't actually see Gould in this in this episode. It's as if the interviewers are talking directly to us and um, that's where the camera is kind of it's uh, looking out. It's like point of view. Yeah. Kind of vantage point and uh, this fugue is running alongside and people are asking him all these mundane questions um, and I think because of the vantage point being point of view and the questions are like being directed at the viewer and um, it's it's like the, the people are uh, asking you the questions and the music's running alongside and it's almost like the questions are so mundane the Gould, he was just practicing over this piece in his head or something like that. You know, that's the kind of impression I got from it. Yeah, it's really interesting. So it was like maybe the music was presenting the inner kind of thoughts that were going on as he was being interviewed by people that, you know, they were asking him, you know, uh, are you into uh, women? Do you have a girlfriend? Or do you like men? Or, or stuff like this, you know? Yeah. Um, or, you know, do you like cooking? What's your favourite food and stuff? All this really... St all this stuff that isn't related to music, so obviously he was he was just just music on the brain all the time. So he was yeah. practicing away in his head while this was going on. So he you know wasn't bored. That's true, and I kind of seen that as points as the music was the character. Yeah, and also because you don't actually hear Gould respond at all, you don't see him, and you don't hear him responding. That's why it's called questions with no answers, because there's no yeah. answers, but there's loads of questions. Yeah. Although it ends at quite a poignant part, that bit. Mm. Wasn't that the the girl? The girl ends that scene, doesn't she? When she asks him, why haven't you called? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. And then it just, all the music stops. I thought that was pretty poignant. I, I also made the point that the, the stream of questions can be viewed as like a, the rhythmic equivalent to the fugue. You know? Oh, nice. Like, kind of like in the previous one, where the the the, the interview is like, Mirroring the, the rhythm as well. So, yeah, I just thought that was kind of nice. Like, both scenes had similarities, yeah. but the fundamental kind of impact of each one was different, you know, because of the the, the vantage point and stuff in the second one. And you don't see gold. Yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah. Nice. 
questions that okay. one. Okay, so shall we move on to my final theme? Mine, this one also kind of relates back in a way to Nick Simcoe. So I picked Passion According to Gould, which is scene 12. But it's kind of like based on, there's a documentary that came out in 1959 called On the Record. Have you seen that? Where it's Glenn Gould and it basically just follows him in the studio. And the director is obviously played, he's played up on this relationship, like in that film you see Glenn Gould like sitting in the studio listening back to recordings and he's clearly in this kind of state where he's just soaked like absorbed into the music sitting listening to it looking through the score and the other guys are talking about like coffee, coffee. and this actually happens in that documentary so yeah. they're like oh you shouldn't take coffee blah 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 so what the director of uh 32 short films has done is made that like disconnect even more so he's not in the studio with them like in the control room he's in his own separate space so there's like a physical barrier between them so obviously we still hear the conversations what i find very interesting in this is right in the original thing um uh he's recording Bach's italian concerto but in gerard's interpretation did i say that right this time yes um we hear a recording of a jig from Bach's English Suite Number no. 2. Now, the film is kind of making us think that that's what's being recorded, but we know that it's not because in that scene, um, one of the producers says the Italian concerto. So the music that we're not hearing, even though it's meant to be diegetic, isn't. So we think that it's diegetic mm. music, but it's not. So those recordings are not the recordings that we're actually hearing. That's pretty interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. Also, like this the way the scene starts, it starts with Gould pumping up his blood pressure, which is then immediately followed by the sound of the recording going back. So again, I think that's obviously establishing a deep connection between Gould and the music. And also we're kind of getting to that point where we're seeing, seeing him come like quite eccentric and uh his hypochondriac. Yeah, and yeah, the parallel back to like Simcoe was Again, at the very end, we see Gold alone, isolated, sitting listening to his music. And those are our scenes. Yeah, so it's a really good film. It's actually really, really worth watching if you haven't watched it. Um, and it's definitely worth exploring the relationships between the music and the film. Obviously, that director is super conscious about it. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's quite, uh, I thought it was a very unique film. I hadn't, I haven't seen anything like it before or, you know, or since yeah. watch it so it's an experience yeah yeah so if you're a fan of Glenn Gould at all you should check it out yeah so thank you very much for watching guys um if you're new then please don't forget to go ahead and subscribe and yeah we'll see you in the next upload see you bye <laughs>